through spiritual discipline and self-conduct, we can be able to access, we can tap into this vast knowledge base through DNA. We can tap into our DNA through discipline. Hey guys, Delby here. Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to look at some organic house, and specifically the organic house of some of the biggest names in the game, Bolton Sintia. Not sure if that's how you say it, but hopefully it's close enough. Anyway, these guys are absolute legends. They're releasing on some of the biggest labels in their genre, like Lost Miracle, All Day A Dream, Lost and Found, and Juno Deep, like the big boys. If you're into that kind of music, then you might like the track that's playing in the background. It's a new one of mine with Mustafa Ishmael and Shah, which is out now on Crosstown Rebels Rebellion label. There's a link in the description if you want to go and grab it. As always, you can download the project files for this video, and there's a link in the description which goes to Patreon, and Patreon is one of the best ways that you can support the channel and make sure I keep bringing you these videos every week. And let's jump into Ableton Live and make some organic house. Alright, so here we are inside Ableton, and this is a little project I've put together in the style of Volunteer. Volunteer, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> it's the same track you heard in the intro, but let me just give play a little bit so you can get an idea of where we're at. Alright, cool stuff, right? Super groovy, super deep, and kind of emotional very atmospheric. So normally with these how to sound like videos, we jump in with the drums. This time I'm gonna jump in with the chord progression as most of the melodic elements are based around this chord progression. And I found this was like a pretty common theme in a lot of the tracks that I referenced, both from these guys and from other artists. So I'm not like super musical, I don't play the piano, but I understand music theory to a pretty rudimentary level. And I suggest that anyone making this kind of music should probably get their head around that kind of thing. We're in the scale of, D sharp minor, I hit scale here, and this is our progression. Okay, so we're starting with the G sharp, we're going up to the D, and then we're kind of descending. I don't really know too much about why this sounds good, but it does sound really good. So every eight bars, we're essentially playing the same second half, the D sharp down to the C sharp. First one, we're starting with the G sharp. Next one, we're starting with the B. So what I did is I made that first, it sounded cool. I took that to the piano. Now the piano is just coming from Ableton Live. It's a sampler rack, I think. So it's a multi-sampled grand piano from Ableton Live, but it's much easier to understand when we just look at it like this. So I just messed around with the tones a little bit to get it to sound the way I wanted. So then, And then I've used the chord device to add an octave below, an octave above, and plus seven. So the perfect fifth. So without that, pretty dull. A lot more dramatic. Now I'm using the scale device set to D sharp minor just to make sure everything gets pushed into the scale in case something's off. So I've got this MIDI device, add some random, which is set to a very low setting, but it's just going to change all of the incoming MIDI notes by up to plus or minus eight. And that's just going to give us some variation every time one of those chords is played and it just gives it a bit more humanization. Uh, then I've basically taken the same chord progression to this pad. So I just duplicated the MIDI from the piano. And then instead of using the chord device, I voiced it in MIDI by just copying out the notes. I then voiced it a bit differently by inverting some of the notes. So there was a bit of separation between them, which just helps it to feel a bit more open. Then the next thing I did was join up any notes that were the same from one chord to the next chord. For example, the first chord is the G sharp, and then we go to the D sharp. 
the G sharp chord has a D sharp in it. So I just moved those D sharps to the same voicing and then made it one continuous note. So this may sound a bit confusing, but it's not really. It's they're very simple chords and basically I just messed around with them until I got something that sounded cool, which is probably why I'm not doing a great job of explaining it. It was just trial and error, really, but I knew what I wanted and I just listened until I found something that sounded cool. So let's have a listen through to that pad. Oh, I'll just open this up. This is a filter. So very nice. Let's just play all of those chord elements together. The bass, the piano, and the pad. I'm just going to freeze this pad because it's <laughs> extending out for so long. It's pretty annoying. But you can hear that that combination of elements spaced across the frequency spectrum, playing that pretty simple progression, is creating an extremely rich and emotive harmonic bed for the track to exist in. And so much of the track is based around this that I thought it was the most important thing to explain first. And this was the element that I started with for the track. Based it all around this music because I knew that once I went in and started doing other things, it was going to be more difficult to come back to this, and that this was what should guide the track. Okay, so that done, we're going to jump back into the drums. We'll start with the kick. It's super simple, just a kick. Very nice and tight with a nice click on the end. I actually sampled it from a Volensintia track. Here's a link to a video, so you can do that too. There's not really much to say. We're just taking out the kick and the break, and I've got this little fill as it rolls back out of the main break. And all I've done there to make it contrasting is pitched these up by seven semitones. So it sounds kind of similar, but not the same. Now we've got a couple of claps playing this MIDI pattern just for a bit of groove, but they're mainly playing on the offbeats, and that's just duplicated with another one. First one. So these claps are quite quiet. They're just really giving some texture and accentuation to the groove. First one has got a sharp attack. This one's got a longer attack. And this one is pulled back, so it's got this kind of like swoosh into it. It's not super audible, but if you listen closely, you can hear that it kind of sucks into the clap. Play it with the kick. Both of these are coming from my sample pack, Underground Shades of House, number one selling sample pack on House of Loop. Okay, let's have a look at the hats. We've got quite a few layers of different texture. So the thing I started with was this closed hat. It's just really simple, coming from East End Dubs. So we've got quite a few washy kind of hats, like shake or shakers, and this one's a bit sharper. It adds a different texture and just gives something to like really cut through. Cool. Come back to the noise hat. Next main element is this shaker. Just playing sixteenths with a very kind of standard shaker pattern, accentuating the offbeats. I've got a groove here, which is cool. I've called shaker swing. So that shaker swing is a modified version of this MPC 16 swing. So I just duplicated that. And the only difference here is the 10% random. So what this 10% random does is it applies the swing as it normally would, but then it also applies 10% randomness in the location off the grid. So that each note is slightly different timing. What I can do is duplicate that and then apply the groove and we can see here the 16th has pushed it off the grid a little bit we can see that even the notes that shouldn't have had swing applied have had a little bit of swing applied so each one of those is different and it's just giving it a more humanized more organic feel very few people can play that robotically so it just kind of makes it feel more human 
Adding to that human element is a bit of velocity randomization so that the volume of each note is going to be slightly different and a little amount of pan randomization. All those small randomized aspects just help to add up and make it feel a bit more human. It's organic house, right? So we want it to sound organic. Now I've got this shaker groove and what we've got here is same MIDI duplicated out. I muted all the notes and then just turned on a few random ones. So it's just creating some kind of accents. And then to make it so that those are not just happening, I've added this ping pong delay. So it sounds like this. So it really just kind of creates some interesting groove and interplay between this and the other main shaker. I've then found a shaker loop from Production Music Live. They've got like a shaker pack on their website, which is pretty cool. All live recorded shakers. So very different, but more textural than the other ones. And there we're just trying to add some humanization again. So really, really cool. And those three things are really working well together to kind of build up this shaker groove. You can then hear it's very contrasted by this closed hat. So the closed hat gives the drive and the shakers give the groove. The next element that we've got is this open shaker, which just kind of happens at the end. And it's basically just to kind of pick up the energy. It's acting like an open hi-hat, but it's got a more organic feel. So this is the pattern we're playing. Let's just take a listen as that comes in. Uh, I'll just turn on this bass as it's quite cool. So very simple groovy pattern and then we've just got this little fill down the end here. So really groovy, just adding some differentiation every second bar but based on the same kind of feel and groove. Take a shot every time I say groove. Uh, then we've got this noise hat which is just a hat being put through a vocoder set to noise and that's just sounding like this. Kind of sounds like a drum machine and i've got some automation on it just to increase the release and the dry wet very cool so you can see that that starts to work as like an effect riser kind of thing as well now we've got some percussion and this is the main groove made of two percussion hits we've got one do, 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 and another do, do. <laughs> let's play it with the kick very groovy now with our beat so you can see by accentuating this hit here before the clap it really kind of in interacts and gives this really rolling groove really makes you want to kind of move and sway with the track. Uh, then we've got this kind of atmospheric clave. Add some random, so that's just really adding some texture. So it's really reinforcing the groove of this percussion. And then we've also got a woodblock playing a very classic afro type pattern. And on that one, we've got a bit of ping pong delay. And then after the delay, I'm using an LFO tool to duck it. So it's just kind of controlling it when the kick plays. Very nice. So that's how the groove is built up. Uh, the next element in the drums is this low tom, which is 
kind of acting like a bass line. So we've got this long bass, which is playing the chords that I showed you. Then we've got this tom. So very classic pattern. If you've watched my video on essential bass lines for underground house and techno, then you'll probably recognize this bass pattern. If not, then here's a link to that video. Check it out. But anyway, very classic bass pattern. And we're just playing a lower octave and then a higher octave. And I've tuned to the tom so that we're hitting the root note of the track, I believe. Yep, D sharp. We're in D sharp minor. So that really accentuates the groove in the low end and gives you kind of something to groove to as this long extended bass has a lot of emotion, but it's not as groovy. Very nice. Okay, so let's have a look at this extended bass. I've made it using Drift. If you didn't check out my video on Drift, then you can check it out here. We're linking a lot of things today, right? Anyway, I just used a preset and tweaked it. Vintage chorus bass. Let me duplicate this, hit hot swap, and just reset the preset. Okay, so this is what it sounded like. All right, it's a bit low. And then this is how I tweaked it. Quite a lot, actually. <laughs> Anyway, it's a pretty basic Reese kind of bass anyway. And then just using LFO tool to duck that in volume each time the kick plays. Here's the MIDI again. So you can hear this tom and this bass together. It really has a cool effect with some of these melodic elements that are staying static, playing on the root note, and then while all these other elements are playing this chord progression and it's changing, the, the ones that are staying static are changing relative to the chords. So it creates a lot of movement, and having that static element that's just playing the same tone actually creates more movement in a way. It's really interesting. Then we've got another bass element, which is these bass plucks. Which is playing a similar pattern to the low tom. So you can hear they're doing kind of call and response type of thing. I'll play them together with the kick. So it's a bass element, but it's actually got a lot of the bass taken out of it. So this is another one coming from Drift. I'll just turn off all the processing. We've got quite a lot of processing. We'll get to that. So this is how it sounds. Right, so this is made up from a sawtooth and then a lower octave. This is like, I guess it's somewhere between a sawtooth and a triangle wave. Don't know. <laughs> Drop a comment if you know what it is. Anyway, it sounds kind of cool. So this is what it would be like if it was a saw. I'm going to take the shape down. With the shape. And then with the other wave. Nice, I like it. Processing, let's turn them all off. Got the LFO tool to duck it. EQ8 to cut out the bass part. So it's really like a mid-bass type sound now. And then we're shaping the sound with this amp. Really bringing up the mids and the highs with this presence set to the bass setting. Then a bit of glue compression just to control the dynamics. Just making sure that those are consistent kind of volume. Then we've got an echo set to eighth notes ping pong, using the filter to pull out any of the extra lows, and that's set to 34 on the dry wet, and 64 on the feedback. 
making it feel kind of nice and spacey and just a bit more you know, a bit more complex and groovy. There's more information to go into the Tantra. We're using a preset called Filter Network, and I've only got the mix up to 13.9%. So if I turn that on, So it's very subtle, it's just adding some texture. Let's hear it on full. Very cool. But I just wanted it to feel a bit more interesting, basically. I'll freeze this track. So if you don't have Tantra, you can still have the audio if you download the project. Link in the description. All right, let's take a look at the melodies. So the piano, we've already kind of looked at, I explained how we we're making up the chords. These are the settings on the grand piano preset. Then we are cutting out the lows because that's being done by this bass, right? I've got it playing some notes down here. I want to have the texture, but I don't actually need the tone from it because the frequency is being covered by the bass. This is how it would sound. but it's just kind of creating a bunch of mud that's going to interfere with our kicking bass. So I'm cutting that away. So although we're cutting out some of these fundamental frequencies, it still has the same feel and vibe. Next up, I've got this cool plugin from Baby Audio called Pitch Drift. Shout out Dowden. I found this on his new video, How to Make Progressive House Like GMJ and Matter. I'll link that video up here. And funnily enough, I think he even got the idea from Matter, who was one of the subjects of that video. So producer YouTube inception or something here. <laughs> but it's a really cool plugin. It creates some pitch drift, like it says on the tin. It's very subtle, set to 20% here. Let's set it to 100. Even at 100%, it's not like unlistenable, but I just want it to be su subtle and again, add some of that humanization and some of that organic factor. Now we've got Tell Chorus LX, another free plugin. Love the free plugins. And this is just adding some chorus. Now we've got the pad that I showed you before. There's basically no processing on that. We're just cutting out even more frequencies to make space for the bass and the piano. I am automating this filter cutoff a little bit. Let's see if we can view that filter automation. Yeah, so that's just helping to increase the amount of frequencies that are let through in the break and creating some kind of flows with the energy through the arrangement. It's pretty subtle. But that pad feels a lot more in the background. It's got a lot more bright fizziness to it here. Really cool preset from Drift. As you can see, I'm trying to get my money's worth from this latest update but in all seriousness it's a fantastic synth and it's free for all versions of Ableton Live so really really good. Uh, we've got this Arp Riser. I actually made this before I made the next element but I wasn't convinced on the melody or the sound. It is kind of cool but I thought I'd just use it as like an effects type thing to create tension into the drop. So what are we doing here? Well, it's uh, another preset from Ableton. People ask me constantly, what's the best synth for this genre or that genre or this style? Everything you need is there, seriously. Uh, then I've got a free rack from Basscliff called Basscliff's Easy Fadeaway. And we're just starting with it all the way faded out, washed out. And then we kind of slowly bring it in. So that kind of reveals itself as that pulls away, which helps to give it the feeling of like an effect, like so, like, like it's rising up. Uh, then I'm sending it to a big washy delay, which is helping to increase that effect type feeling, creating tension. Next up, I've got a marimba, also a preset from Ableton Live that's playing this MIDI pattern where we go da -da 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 -da, up, down, up. Let me set the scale. So just playing eighth notes there, very nice. Uh, and then I've just used this chord device to duplicate the note up an octave.
just helps it to kind of punch through a little bit. Then we are adding a bit of echo. Just feels a bit more organic and washy. Controlling some dynamics with the compressor. You can hear some of those notes are kind of jumping out a little bit. So the compressor is working to control the dynamics and keep them all a similar volume. Then we've got another instance of Tantra. This time we're on 50% with a drum setting called Rumor. You can hear the Tantra is kind of adding some weirdness and some randomness to it. But because it's only on 50%, it's not like overwhelming the sound. So the sound's still there, it's not washed out. We've just got some more texture in the background, which is making it sound nice and atmospheric. All right, let's take a look at the vocals. First thing I've got is this vocal sweep, atmospheric sweep. It's huge. You can see here by how long the um, frozen audio is. But what are we doing here? Let's unfreeze it. it sounds like this. It works really nicely with the pads to help create atmosphere and depth in the track, right? So what are we doing here? I'll unfreeze it for now. Okay, <laughs> crazy. So I've got some glue compression, which is just kind of squashing the dynamics a bit. I've got some erosion, which is set to this white noise setting. And that's just making it sound quite thick. Uh, let's just take all this processing off. To get this, what I did, took a sung ethnic vocal, I put a big washy reverb on it, I froze it, and got this audio, and then I reversed it. It actually sounds like this. Uh... Okay, now I've got the glue compressor, which is just helping to pull up the volume a bit, basically. This is not being used. Delete it. We've got the erosion, a wide noise. Kind of using it like an effect, so I'm just giving it some grittiness. I've got the Tell Chorus LX. Spreading it out to the sides. I've got the Echo set to ping pong dotted eighth notes. helping to make it feel more atmospheric and wider again. Then I've got this free plugin from Valhalla called Supermassive, which is like a combination of delay and reverb and crazy modulation going on underneath. So that makes it sound like this. Makes it carry on for quite a bit longer. Then I'm ducking it with the LFO tool. cutting out some frequencies with the EQ and adding another big reverb on the end. So altogether it sounds like this. Very nice. So next up we've got this raster vox. I got this from YouTube. It's a spoken word with a Rastafarian gentleman talking about his religion. Very cool. I've just chopped it up a little bit and used the clip volume just to make all of these bits a bit more consistent because he was just talking to the camera and some bits were louder when he was accentuating things and some bits were close to whispered. This is something you can do with any vocal. I do this always before I add compression. It's just kind of manually adjust it so that the loud bits are quieter, the quiet bits are louder. It just means that you're not relying on a compressor to work so hard if you've got a lot of dynamics in the vocal. I'm adding quite a heavy amount of EQ. That's just to cut out the deepness of his voice. There's a lot of information going on in the track. And then here kind of accentuates the pronunciation of the words. And this just makes it feel a bit more airy. I've got a series of compressors again to just really control that dynamics. I've got one that's very slow with a short release that's, that's helping to bring up the volume. And then we've got another one with a faster attack that's helping to control the attack of the words. 
Uh, then I've got some chorus just to make it feel a bit wider and spacious. And then an echo, which is adding some echo. <laughs> so it sounds like this. The knowledge where man inherits without the teaching of another, another person. person. Divine, Divine knowledge, knowledge is stored in every man's DNA because, because, because the information of creation is written, is written in, in our DNA. DNA. Through spiritual discipline and self-conduct, we can be able to access, we can tap into this vast knowledge base through with DNA. You can hear there's a couple of crackles in there, I guess like the microphone that he was wearing got touched or something like that. Not perfect, but yeah, just some audio ripped from an interview on YouTube. One interesting thing on the echo, these are the settings, is on the character, I've got ducking set. So when he's actually speaking, the echo is being ducked. I've got a threshold set to minus 18. So you can hear it has quite a bit of echo going on. It sounds quite cool and atmospheric, but you can still hear what he's saying. Discipline and self-conduct, we can be able to access, we can tap into this vast knowledge base through with this. So you can hear when I turn that ducking off, it starts to sound a bit more washed out. I've just tried to kind of place this vocal to give some emphasis to some things that he's saying and to create a flow of energy through the track, create some interest in the break. So let's listen to this before the drop. We can tap into our DNA through discipline. So you can hear there, I've just sent it to a reverb, the word discipline. And we've got another section of vocal here where I'm just doing the same thing at the end of the phrase. It's the way that is right. The way of man is the way of miscalculations and confusion. So there, I just sent the word confusion to the delay. And just doing those kind of automations helps to make it feel like the vocal is really part of the track. Now we've got some effects. There's actually not too much craziness in the effects. I've got this white noise which I made with drift. You can see I've just got the noise oscillator. I've used envelope one for the amplification and envelope two to modify the filter. Turn this off, it sounds like this. Then I've used another instance of Supermassive. So all these free plugins you can download for free. So go grab them, they're cool. This preset called Swollen Pad, and I think I've just pulled the mix down to 36%, and that sounds like this. It's quite a lot, so I've used this LFO tool to just duck it to the kick. You can hear it's not too loud in the mix, it's really just kind of helping to create some tension and release in the breaks, accentuate those drops. Okay, so as a kind of riser effect, we've got a couple of crashes, reverse crashes. So this is just a standard crash that I use quite a lot, and I've reversed it, and then I've got a reverb on it. This one, I've basically done something similar. I, d I basically did th had this, but I extended it like this put the reverb on, froze it, and flattened it, and copied it down here. Then I've just duplicated the reverb, and it sounds like this. So a bit more atmospheric and washy, and those are just working together. And that way I've got one that I can use in some places, and these bigger sounding ones sound a bit bigger. Cool. Now we've got these dub effects 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So what I've done with these is basically taken some percussion, put it through a delay and a reverb, and frozen it. Let's recreate that, create a new MIDI track. Now let's go to Underground Shades of House, One Shots, Drum Shots, Percussion. Okay, that one will do. So we'll drag in that percussion. I'm going to change the envelope. So we're playing the full thing, make a MIDI clip, we'll put this on C, drag it out. Now I'm going to grab an echo, drop it on, we'll just bring this back to about 35 to 40, feedback up to maybe 75, change the filter a little bit, let's see how that sounds. We're almost there, now I'll just throw a reverb on. I'll set this to about 30, bring this down to somewhere around 40 or so, a bit more decay, a bit more diffusion. Yeah, let's try that. Cool. Now we could also put some ping pong, or we could set these to different delays. 
whatever you like. Let's do that. Then we just right click, freeze track, grab this audio, copy it down to a new track. And then we've got our audio clip, same as this one. Simple. And yeah, so we've just got a few different percussion sounds. different tones and textures and I'm just using those to accentuate and I'm just using those to accentuate different drops and moments in the track just helps to add atmosphere and texture and ambience so really fun groovy music now as always you can download the project files for Ableton Live there's a link in the description that goes to Patreon it's one of the best ways you can support the channel and make sure I keep bringing you these videos now let's take a whole listen through from the start Inherit without the teaching of another person. Divine knowledge is stored in every man's DNA because the information of creation is written in our DNA. Through spiritual discipline and self conduct, we can be able to access, we can tap into this vast knowledge base through DNA. We can tap into our DNA through discipline. guys there you go what do you think groovy right let me know in the comments how did i do on their sound if you like these kind of videos how to sound like then check out this playlist you're gonna like it well, that's it for me today we'll catch you next time peace